Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today's just a quick unboxing. I uh, had a problem with my KVM the other day. I was trying to set up my new Raspberry Pi uh, as a router uh, for the network. I, I have a router, but it's a, a workstation uh, and it's running in a VM with access to the four uh, network interfaces that it needs. And uh, I figured I could save some power if I could run the thing on a, on a Raspberry Pi. So that's my ambition. Uh, when I went to work on it yesterday, the KVM that I have in the back here uh, just wouldn't work with my keyboard for some reason. And I spent ages messing around with it, trying to get it to go. And I couldn't figure out the problem. It seemed to be related to the KVM. If I put the keyboard in directly, it seemed to work. It was just a hassle. So I, uh, I thought I'm going to get myself a new KVM just to rule that out as a possibility. And because I really didn't want to mess around with it, when I went to Amazon, to buy a new KVM, I ended up getting two of them. I got one of them for like 50 bucks and the other one for like 80 bucks. And this is them. Um, and they're from the same manufacturer. I didn't realize this when I bought them. One of them is from KCEVE and the other one is from KCEVE. So they're uh, apparently uh, two KVMs, one small, one big from the same manufacturer. Um, I figured I might as well do the unboxing because you only get the chance once. So I'm gonna do that today. I'm not going to plug them in and try them out. I think when I go to test them, I'll try the smaller one first because if it does the job and it takes up less space, that's good. Uh, if I have problems with the smaller one, I guess I'll try the bigger one, but hopefully I can get my Raspberry Pi to respond to either one of these. So um, yeah, I'll pop you over to the bench. Let's pop these things out of the box and see what we've got. So here we are on the bench. This is the first one. It's a KCEVE, Windows, Mac, Smart TV, Smart Central. The picture is for reference only. Please make object as the standard. Awesome. So something might have been lost in translation there. We've got a map on the back. Australia's in blue. That's got to be good. Anyway, blue, 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 blue. Wonderful. Save time and share resources anywhere. Office, control room, business meeting, study. Committed to audio and video, video intelligent system, product development, and production. Well, that certainly inspires me with confidence. Let's see what's in the box. So... This looks like the main bit of the equipment in a little bag. 18 gigabits per second, HDMI, five ports, KVM switcher. So we've got a power on and power off switch. I uh, definitely like having a power on power off switch. That always inspires me with confidence. So that's good to have. Keyboard, mouse, and then two auxiliaries. Switches, PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4. So I like everything I see so far. On the back, this is the model AM KVM 401K. 18 gigabits per second, HDMI, four ports, KVM switcher. Input four times HDMI, uh, HDMI, four times USB-C, output one times HDMI. Down in two times USB, A mouse and keyboard, two times USB hub, supports video re re resolution up to 4K at 60 Hertz, compliance with HDMI 2, HDCP 2.2 standard, adaptive EDID, HDCP decryption, supports USB 2, the hotkey switch is control control plus number or scroll scroll plus number, technical support, at AIMOSRD at 163.com. 163.com, that's a pretty cool domain name. So there we go, that's the first one. Let's see what else is in the box. Looks like a bunch of uh, cables. So that's pretty cool. This is uh, USB-A to USB-C. This is also USB-A to USB-C. And this is, and this is. So we've got four USB-A to USB-C. Uh, and on the back, you can see that we've got the USB-C inputs. So that's pretty cool. And then we've got one HDMI cable. That looks like uh, our output cable, I guess you'd say. Cool. And there's a manual in here, so let's have a quick look at that. Might as well put this thing back together. And here we are. So we've got the 18 gigabits, HDMI 2.0, KVM 4x1 switch, user manual. Description, HDMI 2.0, four ports KVM switch, four groups of high definition video source and USB interface, realize freely switch. Adaptive EDID HDCP decryption. The equipment has excellent image processing and transmission capacity. Make the output signal is more smooth and steady, is a reliable high performance and efficient way of HDMI USB switch. Suitable for office, computer room, monitoring host, and so on. And switch freely by hotkey. <clears throat> now actually, you know, just between you and me, I actually have a KVM in front of this KVM, and the KVM that I use in front of this KVM uses scroll lock, scroll lock. This also uses scroll lock, scroll lock. It's never gonna see it. So I'm gonna use the control, control option when I use this, and hopefully everything doesn't go ass up when I try to do that. We'll see. So this thing says features. The four routes of high definition video source and USB interface implement free switch. 
HDMI 2.0 compatible input and output ports, supports video re resolution up to 4K at 60 Hz, which is a total of 18 gigabits per second. Supports RGB 444, YCBCR 444, and so on. Supports deep color. Supports HDMI input and backward compatibility, allows DVI inputs, adaptive EDID HDCP encryption, able to adapt to a variety of complex application environment. It can be switched by hotkey mode and host key mode, which is convenient and quick. HDCP 2.2 standard, high bandwidth, digital content protection technology, high compatibility, can auto match source and display device, built-in automatic adjustment system, make the image smooth, clear and stable. Built-in ESD protection system, simple to install, plug and play, package list, HDMI KVM 4x1 switcher, one piece, USB cable, four piece, user manual, one piece. And they're doing themselves a disservice there because there was a HDMI cable as well, which they haven't listed. And there's a bunch of specifications. So the video standards are HDMI 2.0 and HDCP 2.2. The maximum data rate is 6 gigabits per lane per second, total 18 gigabits per second. The resolution range is up to 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz. Uh, connector, HDMI, uh, HDMI cable range, less than 5 meters at maximum resolution. Uh, USB 2 support, uh, power supply USB, power dissipation maximum 4 watts, temperature within minus 5 degrees to plus 70 degrees, humidity 5% to 90%, and the dimensions are, you know, they're about this big. Oh, look, I've got a little, what's this? Oh, dear me. Oh, look at that, isn't that terrible? Um, this is the equipment. And this is the push button on PC4. It's just dead set falling out of the case. That's not good. You don't want that to happen when you're doing an unboxing video. So let me put that back on there. Yeah, right. Ah, fascinating. So uh, yeah, the button literally fell out while I was talking to you. So that's that's not good press. You don't want that to happen when someone's doing a YouTube unboxing of your product that the, the button falls out. But yeah, that thing just dead set fell out. Anyway, the good news is it went straight back on and it seems to be okay now. So yeah, well, you know, no harm, no foul. I'm not upset with you at all, uh, K-C-E-V-E, -E, whoever you are. Dear me, awful. Uh, so this is the hotkey switch on the bottom of the switcher, hotkey of the keyboard. You can press control, control plus the number, or you can press scroll plus scroll plus the number. Uh, hotkey of the mouse, press and hold the scroll on the mouse, press the right or left button and release, last release to scroll. So you can fuck around with the mouse to try and control this thing as well. There you go. Manual is applicable to AM, KVM 401 and AVM KM 401K. It's quite possible that the 401k is what I have on the other on the other one. Anyway, we've got a thing called the application example. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Anyway, this is a Q&A section in the back of the manual. I'm not going to read that to you. And then the rest of it's in Chinese. So there's some sort of Q&A bits and pieces at the back of the manual. And that's about that. Anyway, what I'm going to do with this guy, I'm planning to use it. So I'm just going to ditch this, which is the... Um, <sighs> The, the, the plastic cover for the device. I've got a bunch of cables um, that came with the thing. I'm just going to put them in my cabling system. That's four USB-C to USB-A cables and another HDMI cable. As if I didn't already have enough USB-C-A and HDMI cables. Anyway, now I've got more. Good for me. So that was our first unboxing. And this will be our second unboxing. Again, it's the KCEVE. Uh, it says the same shit on it that the other one said. It's got the same colors on the back, inspiring me with confidence. This thing is bigger than the other one, so I don't think they're the same thing. This is bigger than the other one. I don't really know what the difference is. Oh, USB 3. There you go. Let's press those buttons in, because last time one of them fell out, so these guys haven't exactly inspired me. Oh, this is good. It's got the same power switch on the front of it. That's good to know. And it's got a select port over here with a USB-C interface, so I'm expecting to find... Uh, some sort of a remote control for this thing that plugs in here. Although I have to say, uh, this thing's going to be sitting on my bench and the front panel buttons are really all I need. So an extra thing hanging off the thing, it's not particularly useful for me and I kind of don't care. So this thing is bigger and bigger is not better in this situation. So if I can get away with it, I'm going to use the other one that I just showed you. But it's good to know that both of them have the on and off power switch because I definitely do like that, especially when you've got problems with your uh, USB devices. I always feel better when I can hard boot the things, you know? So it looks like I'll be able to do that with this switch. I've got the switch on both of them, that's good. This, the difference between this thing is the front panel switch is a USB-C 3, which is uh, better, but who cares when they're driving a mouse and a keyboard, uh, which is what these things are going to be doing. So I don't need the extra bandwidth. It means nothing to me. And on the back, um, oh, that's interesting. We've got a DC 5 volts. Let me just quickly check. Because I didn't notice that on the other one, did you? No. I don't know how this thing is powered. 
because it doesn't have power in. So it must be powering itself off the HDMI or the USB or something. I don't feel real good about that. I always prefer a device that powers itself. So maybe we will use the big one just to, uh, to avoid that power issue. And uh, yeah, the difference is on the back of this one, all the inputs are USB-C. <coughs> Whereas on this one, all the inputs are USB-A. And they're all USB 3.0. And we've got a DC 5 volts in. Of course, there's the single HDMI output. So uh, yeah, I, might just, uh, I might just settle in with this one. Why not? I don't necessarily need to use its uh, um, remote control. But uh, presumably, when we go digging in this box, that's what we'll find. So there's our uh, 5 volt power supply. Nothing exciting or exceptional about that. And then there's one, two, three, four USB 3 uh, type A cables. This is a HDMI adapter. And this is the remote control. It's got one, two, three, four. So you can, you can press a button for the remote control for the thing. Fair enough. Now, this is the user manual. This is the KM201A or the 401A. I'm not quite sure what we're dealing with. USB 3, HDMI 2, allows two or four groups of HD video source and USB interface device switch freely. Adaptive EDID, HDCP decrypt. The device has excellent image processing capabilities and transmission, making the output signal smoother and more stable. It's reliable, high performance, efficient HDMI USB switch, suitable for office, computer room, monitoring room, etc. Features two or four routes of high definition video source and USB devices can be freely switched between two or four computers. Support video resolution up to 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz. Combines with HDMI 2, W, blah, 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 switch, blah, blah, blah. So we've got uh, the HDMI switcher, the USB cables, the user manual. They, uh, they never listed the HDMI cable as, as an uh, added included benefit, nor did they mention the remote control. And there's a bunch of uh, specifications on the back, which pretty much match what the other ones are, with the exception of the USB 3. So what do you reckon? What am I going to do? I'll switch you back over here while we think about it. So uh, we've got two of these guys. Uh, the reason I like the bigger one is that it has a 5 volt input rail. And I'm happier about something which has its own power. Uh, apart from that, I don't really care about the fact that it does USB-C 3, but that doesn't hurt. And the fact that it actually has USB type A inputs is probably better for me because those are the sorts of things that I want to plug in. Uh, so I don't have to use an adapter for the type C inputs. So this thing's a bit bigger than this one, but I think this is the one that I'm going to use because I like the fact that it has its own power rail and I prefer the fact that it has type A USB inputs. So I'm going to give this a go and I expect that I'm not going to need this one. I honestly have no idea what this thing powers itself off. If it's the USB inputs or the HDMI inputs, I don't know if it's even possible to power yourself off a HDMI output. I don't know. Uh, but I reckon this one's going to meet my requirements, which means I'll probably never look at that one. I'll put it in the cupboard and keep it for a rainy day. Because you never know when you're going to need a HDMI KDM switch. I have one, two, three, four KDM switches in my lab already. Uh, two of them are HDMI switches, one of which is not working, which is why I got this replacement. I've got a display port KVM switch over here from my main workstation, and that cost me an arm and a leg because I wanted to get one that supported the display port at the high resolutions, which is actually fucking expensive. So I've got a, a, a dual head KVM switch for my main workstation. I've got a four head K, uh, HDMI switch for my lab. I've got a four port HDMI switch for whatever this is, and I've got a four port VGA switch for my servers over here. So I've got switches everywhere. Um, and it's quite possible that I'll need another one at some point. So it doesn't hurt me to have one in the cupboard. I reckon this thing is going to meet my needs. It's going to be a hassle unplugging everything over there and plugging it all in here. So I hope after I've done that, I find that I have a system which actually works. Uh, the goal, as I said, is to get my Raspberry Pi Model 4B working. At the moment, if I put the KVM into the uh, USB, and it doesn't matter if I use the USB 2 or the USB 3, it just doesn't work. I hope the issue is to do with the KVM. I suspect that it is, um, and not to do with the Raspberry Pi. I guess we'll find out soon. Uh, I don't know. I'll let you know. If you follow the blog, I'll probably blog about it at some point. I'm probably not going to do another video to tell you about that. Um, 
Yeah, so that's it. So I would, today's just an unboxing of the two uh, HDMI switches. We've had a look in the box. I'll let you know what I'm planning to do. Uh, so that's everything. The details will be in the blog post if you're interested in this equipment. Now you've had a little bit of a look inside the box. Uh, if you've got any comments, I'll be happy to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.